A Nightmare on Elm Street is most definitely one of the most iconic horror movies ever made and Freddy Krueger's evil serial killer character was an instant hit with the audience. In fact, parents often scared their children by threatening them with Freddy's presence. And there was also a popularized nursery rhyme that went, One, two, Freddy's coming for you. Freddy Krueger has left quite a legacy as a major horror villain and there are many unique things about his physiology and ways of terrorizing his victims that are not as widely known by the audience. Today, we will be exploring the anatomy of this supernatural psycho killer and tell you everything about Freddy Krueger. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. It's a boy! A little backstory of Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger was born to a nun named Amanda Krueger, who used to work at the Western Hills Asylum. Amanda once got into a horrible situation when she was accidentally locked in a room with a hundred maniacs who forced themselves upon her. She barely made it alive out of the room and it was later found that she was pregnant with Freddy. On the 12th of November 1938, Amanda gave birth to Freddy Krueger, who spent his childhood with an abusive alcoholic named Mr. Underwood. People at school were even aware of his backstory and called him the son of one amongst the hundred maniacs. He soon started displaying violent tendencies and even killed the school hamster after being picked on. After attaining adulthood, he even started hurting himself with a shaving razor. Soon after, he got fed up with Mr. Underwood and killed him with the same razor when he tried to beat him. Freddy soon got a job in a boiler room at a local power plant and then he spent many years of his adult life kidnapping children and bringing them back to the boiler room. He would then mistreat them and take their lives. But his crimes were soon uncovered and he was put under arrest. However, he did not remain behind bars since there were some issues with the paperwork and search warrant and he was then released due to a technicality issue. The locals in Springwood refused to let him wander among them and they came together to kill him. They found him at his hideout in the boiler room, set the place on fire with Molotov cocktails and burned him to death. This is God. How does Freddy kill his victims? When Freddy was alive, he used to abduct his victims from their homes and bring them to the boiler room at his workplace to torture them to death. After he was burned alive, three dream demons approached him and offered the ability to invade people's dreams. Freddy then became a dream demon and he would enter the children's nightmares in Springwood and haunt their subconscious. He would trouble them in their dreams and even take their life in unimaginable ways. Freddy was given the blessing of the dream demons which allowed him to injure these children in the real world by inflicting harm on them in their dreams. These children then suffered bodily harm in their reality and often died in somewhat suspicious circumstances without being physically attacked in the real world. Freddy even possessed godlike power in this dream realm and he often resorted to using the most strange and twisted ways of killing his victims. Freddy fed on his victims' fears to become more powerful and he could do just about anything to them in their dreams. He could appear out of nowhere and change his physical features and the complete structure of his victims' dreams. He could even manipulate their dreams to target their specific fears, hopes and even personalities and he was essentially an omnipotent entity who had total control over this dream world. He also had psychic powers and he could detect his victims' hopes and fears by reading their mind. Usually, he appeared in his victim's nightmares in a deformed version of himself and wore a typical outfit that consisted of a red and green sweater, a fedora hat and black pants. He also carried his signature weapon, a leather glove with sharp blades attached to it. Since Freddy was burned to death, he had burned skin and a face full of horrible scars. Freddy sometimes faced children who had the power to control their dreams and resist his attacks and they almost destroyed Freddy by going after him in their nightmares. However, Freddy was quite persistent and determined even in death and he always managed to find a way to return.
Freddy also consumes the souls of his victims. After killing his victims, Freddy would then consume their souls and trap them within his body. These souls were then subjected to eternal horror and suffering for as long as Freddy lived on and never really attained any peace, even after the death of the mortal bodies they occupied. While his victims' souls suffered, Freddy fed on their sufferings and only kept getting stronger than ever. Then open up! And you shall be forever! How did Freddy Krueger get the power to enter people's dreams? After Freddy was burnt alive by the parents at Springwood, he was approached by three dream demons. Dream demons were evil entities who tried to recruit other evil people, giving them power so that they could wreak havoc in the living world. Their main aim was to break the barrier between the dream and the real world, and Freddy was the perfect candidate to spread evil in the world. The dream demons targeted him and soon possessed him and offered him the power to terrorize young children in their dreams. This was revealed in the final film of this series, titled Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, wherein a young girl named Maggie entered the dream realm and even pulled Freddy out of it. She then stabbed him to death and ensured that the dream demons were eliminated from within his body, which caused him to lose his powers. The whole deal with his gloved hands. While Freddy had a lot of ways to kill his victims, he often used his clawed glove to kill them. The clawed glove was his signature weapon, and it was essentially a leather glove with razor-sharp claws at the end of every finger. The movie's creator, Wes Craven, revealed that he sought inspiration for the glove from his cat and that he had no idea it would become such a critical part of Freddy's character. In fact, there is a viral image of Freddy standing in the shadows with his gloved hand reaching out. And this this implies that Freddy could easily reach for the real world, even from the shadows of the dream realm. Lou Carlucci designed this leather glove with a metal backplate that helped him to attach a blade to each finger. As the movie series progressed, the blades attached to the glove kept getting bigger and sharper, and Freddy was always notably seen wearing this glove on his right hand across the franchise. Some minor changes were made to the glove across the franchise, and a scene from A Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors showed the blades of the glove transform into a set of poisonous syringes. Later, Wes Craven had the idea of introducing the glove as an extension of Freddy's hand instead of an additional weapon, and he executed this idea in New Nightmare. Here, the glove was a part of Freddy's appendage, and one could see his muscles, veins, and bones being exposed underneath the blades that had replaced Freddy's fingernails. The 2010 remake of the film also had a different look for the glove, wherein the blades at the end of the fingers were attached to a cuff at the base of the glove instead of being supported by a metal backplate. Freddy's glove is undoubtedly one of the most iconic weapons that ever appeared in horror cinema, and it is one of the first things that comes to mind when one mentions Freddy Krueger. Can Freddy Shapeshift? Exploring the different forms of Freddy in the franchise. While Freddy is famously known for his signature red and green sweater outfit, he has taken on various disguises across the franchise, and he also could shapeshift while terrorizing his victims in their nightmares. In the original Nightmare on Elm Street film, Freddy had once taken the form of a hall monitor who asks a young girl named Nancy for her hall pass. He later turns into his usual red and green sweater clad self before finally possessing Nancy's car. He later took the form of a bus driver in the second movie of the franchise, and his earlier transformations were not very drastic. In Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors, Freddy once transforms into a giant snake to attack Christian, and then even takes the form of a puppet and a TV. This movie saw many of his notable shape-shifting transformations, and he once even possessed his skeleton to kill Donald Thompson. He disguised himself as Thompson's ghost to lure Nancy, and later even had some fun when he shape-shifted into an attractive nurse to lure Joy into his trap. In the next movie, Freddy briefly transformed into a nurse again and started turning his victims into other creatures. He once turned Debbie into a cockroach, and this movie did not see many different transformations. Freddy famously transformed into Baby Freddy and a very well-built Super Freddy in A Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child. 
In Wes Craven's New Nightmare, Freddy took the form of Heather's son Dylan to freak her out. He later appeared as a doctor and threatened Dylan by saying that he would cut the evil out of him. However, it is later revealed that there was quite an exciting twist behind Freddy's appearance in this movie and that he was an ancient demonic entity who had only taken Freddy's form. Freddy had the grandest shape-shifting form in Freddy vs. Jason, wherein he once appeared as a red-skinned demonic entity. He also turns into Jason's mum for a while and takes other forms such as Laurie's dad and the Crystal Lake camp counsellor. His most remarkable transformation was probably when he turned into Bobby, Mark's dead brother, who had killed himself. He has even shapeshifted into his human form in the 2010 remake of the classic film, wherein his character was played by Jackie Earl Haley. Can Freddy Krueger reproduce? When Freddy Krueger was still alive and operating as a serial killer, he had family and a lot of connections who were unaware of his secret. Freddy grew up with his adoptive father, Mr. Underwood, and the movie titled Freddy is Dead revealed that he later married a woman named Loretta. Before he was exposed for murdering children in Springwood, Freddy fathered a daughter named Catherine with his wife Loretta. Later on, Loretta discovers Freddy's secret room where he stored the dead bodies of the children and Freddy decides to kill her in order to silence her. He was unaware of the fact that his daughter had witnessed this crime and she eventually exposed his crimes which led to his arrest. Freddy does not have the best relationship with his daughter and Catherine finally kills him for good in one of the later movies. In his demonic form, Freddy did not father any known children and it is also quite unlikely that he would be able to have kids in a supernatural form. <laughs> Who is Baby Freddy? Baby Freddy was an alternate form of Freddy Krueger and he only appeared in the 1989 film titled A Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child. Baby Freddy had a deformed face that closely resembled Freddy after he died due to burn wounds. But it was later revealed that Freddy grew up as a normal child and did not have any unusual features. Baby Freddy only appears in a dream sequence in the movie, wherein Alice follows Amanda Krueger while she gives birth to Freddy in the Western Hill Psychiatric Hospital. In the previous film, Alice had managed to kill Freddy and she had even freed the innocent souls trapped within his body. After realizing he could no longer control these souls, Freddy's body had turned into nothing and his clothes had fallen to the floor along with his glove. In this movie, Alice witnesses the scene while Amanda gives birth in a dream sequence and the newborn Freddy then runs out of the room and rushes into the church altar in the hospital. He had a strange appearance and it was suggested that this deformed look was a true reflection of Freddy's evil soul. While baby Freddy rushes out of the hospital room, he crawls up on a pedestal and even screams aloud when he finds some of Freddy's fallen clothes on the floor. His supersonic scream results in debris falling to the floor, a window breaking and even the floor rising up in a strange series of events. Finally, baby Freddy finds Freddy's clothes and crawls into a sweater lying near him. While Alice witnesses these events, she sees baby Freddy momentarily transform into adult Freddy and even tells him that she will find the way to defeat him once and for all. At the end of this movie, Jacob Daniel Johnson uses his dream power to turn Freddy back into baby Freddy. Amanda then turns the young infant into energy and absorbs him back inside her body. Why did Wes Craven not give Freddy a mask like the other iconic slasher villains? While most slasher villains had their signature masks, Freddy Krueger's horribly scarred face was never hidden behind one. Wes Craven stated that he was quite aware of this mask trend amongst horror villains and deliberately avoided it. He wanted Freddy's face to have a realistic appearance and it was important for his facial expressions to be visible to the audience as they played a significant role in making him as scary as he was. Of course, Robert England's portrayal of Freddy in his signature smirks and scary laughter would also have gone unnoticed if Freddy wore a mask. Freddy's lack of a mask also helped him stand out among other horror villains and it became a key feature that made him very popular with the audience. Robert England had also spent countless hours in the makeup chair to obtain this look and a lot of effort went into creating Freddy Krueger. Kids.
How can Freddy Krueger be killed or defeated? Freddy also had a few weaknesses and could not spread his influence outside of Springwood. He was also not restrained within the dream world and could be pulled out of there. In this case, he then became a mortal being without any powers and it became very easy to kill him. Freddy also had an irrational fear of fire after being burned to death and he could be pulled into the real world if his victims used fire in their dreams to scare him. Even though Freddy had died and returned to Springwood on multiple occasions, he could not come back if people did not remember him and he could be easily defeated over time if the locals forgot him. Moreover, his powers did not affect his opponents if they were not scared of him and it was quite easy to defeat him in this case. In the original film, the protagonist, Nancy, discovers this weakness and she then defeats him by pulling him out of her dreams without showing any fear. However, one would have to believe in themselves and be sure that they don't fear Freddy or else he could still trap them in their nightmares. When Debbie Stevens once shakily tried to tell Freddy that she didn't believe in him, he could easily control her and trap her in a strange roach motel hell. In Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy possesses the body of a young man named Jesse and he is defeated when Jesse's girlfriend, Lisa, confesses her love for him instead of fearing him. This helped Jesse to overcome Freddy's possession and returned to his senses for a minute and he then started a fire which scared Freddy away. After regaining control over his body, Jesse burned Freddy to death. In A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, the Dream Warriors, Dr. Neil Gordon had come up with a very clever plan to dig up Freddy Krueger's actual bones and then bury them on holy ground. He goes with Donald Thompson to find Freddy's bones and then tries to put him to rest by finally burying them. While Freddy tries to attack them and stop them from doing this, Dr. Neil manages to bury the bones and seemingly kills him in this movie. In the fourth movie in this franchise titled A Nightmare on Elm Street 4, the Dream Master, Alice, confronts Freddy and screams a verse from a nursery rhyme called The Dream Master. As she recites the line, evil will see itself and it will die, Freddy finally sees all the evil he has done so far and of all the souls he has fed on. When he comes to this realization, all the souls within his body tear him apart to free themselves and end up killing him in the process. In the 1994 New Nightmare film, the actress Heather Langenkamp played a role against Freddy and killed him by pushing him into a furnace and burning him to death. In some other movies, Freddy died during a physical fight in the mortal world and the 2003 Freddy vs. Jason film included a scene where Jason almost defeated Freddy in a battle. However, this fight ended in a draw and Freddy managed to defend himself. In the 2010 reboot film, Freddy was killed by drawing him to the real world and then destroying his glove before slitting his throat and burning him to death. Freddy also had a son named Jason with Alice in the fifth movie titled A Nightmare on Elm Street, The Dream Child. In this movie, Jason teamed up with his grandmother, Amanda Kruger, and unleashed his powers to corner Freddy while Amanda absorbed him back in her womb and sealed him away for good. In another instance, Freddy's daughter, Catherine Kruger, grew up to become a doctor and even took on a new identity as Maggie Burrows. In Freddy's Dead, the final nightmare, Maggie finds finally kills Freddy in a jarring finale, wherein she attacks him with his signature gloves and then stabs a pipe bomb in his chest and blows him up. Let's go. Conclusion. To sum it up, Freddy Krueger definitely had quite an adventurous character arc and his powers also helped him stand out among the other iconic slasher villains. He certainly has a unique physiology and has left behind quite a legacy as one of the most iconic and well-remembered horror villains of all time. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.